Hey, hey, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode in the world and life of Mama Joy. Yeah, I guess I can, I've been asleep for most of the day and again. Bed bug man did, uh, could not, it was a different bug man this time. Different bug man. But he wasn't an asshole like the other one was. And, well, I had to go get the bags out of the bathtub and bring them right back in here into the room. Because he couldn't do it today. The guy said I tried and did everything I was supposed to do. And he just pointed out that I had to clear my closets out. And I had a few things I couldn't bag up because I ran out of bags. And the guy even told me that every apartment that he had to go treat today wasn't ready. Now he said I had every I had as much I had the most done out of everybody that he was supposed to do today. He me and probably the guy down the hallway. Because we did everything that we were supposed to do. But at least this guy pointed out things that needed to be done. And gave me a list. And are working with me on this. So, you know, even though. And it's like. Even though we didn't get done when we were supposed to get done. But it's also hard for us to wake up in the morning around here. You know, be out of here at 8 o'clock and be ready. So maybe the bug man will come at 10 o'clock or something instead of 8. We can try to schedule it with him. But that's pretty much my been my day and why you have not seen me out here. But it was Thursday, March 29th. But it's now another Friday, March 30th. Good Friday. And also Free BG Friday. But it's for me, it ain't just free BG Friday, it's free BG every day, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the whole course, the main subject of this video is that I am feeling a high sense of relief. I have been feeling this way since yesterday when I spoke to another friend of mine from that I've known since middle school and high school. Now, if we all, a lot of us, I don't have many of us, I mean, bullying is a big issue nowadays and so much is trying to be done now to stop bullying even though it's like, it's like more is being done now than there was back then. Even though there's still bullying going on and um, especially kids out here killing themselves, committing suicide because they was being bullied too much. I just heard, I just seen on, uh, seen an article about a guy, a kid that was about sixth grade that just, uh, shot himself or kill himself because uh, he was being bullied in school. And, you know, hearing about what these kids go through now, kids killing themselves, and just the bullying and stuff, just everything is going on, the school shootings, it's like, but the bullying is something I identify with because um, I had been bullied as a child. I've been bullied as even on jobs by very pe many people, different people. You know, it, I'm lucky to still be alive myself, but it's to the point where sometimes it's like, you know, I was bullied so bad. It was because I was disabled. 
was either my disability or it's just the fact I was always in places where I just did not fit in with people. And I had just been dogged out, bullied so much in my life that I now and have been for maybe at least for a long time, ever since it's happened, you know, I'm, I, I'm suffering from what he called PTSD. And PTSD, with my PTSD, I often have flashbacks of times when I either got beat up, I got jumped, um, even just simple emotional verbal abuse, you know? I told you about the time I was like 11 and uh, some dude, I don't go into that, but y'all heard that story, some of y'all have heard, but I mean, I was even bullied on jobs because people thought I was stupid and, you know, I was never beat up at a job, but like I said, there's been managers that's got stupid with me and, and treated me horrible. And there was, and then sometimes they would do like, say for example, make me do all the work while they don't sit and do shit. You know, they employees themselves sometimes would boss me around like they was my boss and you know it's 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 a long story what I've been through in my life you know but that's been that's pretty much been most of the problems I've had gone through in life with bullying you know I'm lucky that I was strong enough to stay alive you know and there was a time when I was 16 where I did try to commit suicide because of what I was going through being bullied and because of the result of the bullying and the result of the thing that was going on, rather it was at school or on the streets, anything, you know, that I could live a normal life of a 16 year old that everybody else was able and, you know, it put me in a deep depression, you know. It's one reason I got depression, you know, main reason, you know. I already had problems to begin with you know, as a child, but going through the bullying just made things worse, you know. It just made things worse. Okay, I really, and sometimes it's like when I think, when, when I just remember, like, what I've, this is what, I'm trying to figure out how to describe this scenario the best way I can. And some of y'all watching may even know the person I'm talking about. I mean, I had a few friends growing up and people that did like me. Thank God, because they can sit on here and witness. And, you know, as I sit here and talk about this stuff that happened to me in middle and high school, a lot of them will sit here and witness and say this shit did happen because we, we witnessed it. There's times we've had to tell people to tell certain people, leave joy alone. Uh, it's... It was, I was a different person back in school, back in middle school, it's because a lot of things that I wasn't prepared to, I just basically with my ch early childhood, just as a, a little kid growing up, you know, even though I, you know, I mean, I guess like I said, I, I was... There's places I live where you had to learn, know how to fight, and I guess I was just, when I was a little kid, I was just, I, I guess I was scared to fight that sometimes. 
I didn't know how. And so, I was pretty much not prepared for what would happen in middle school. I wasn't prepared to know how to stand up to people that was messing with me. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. And, you know, kind of being, having the disabilities that I had made it to where it was hard for me to catch on and just, you know, catch on to shit. So, I was easy. And I was just an easy target. And it's just like, I'm just saying, I'm trying to run my right thing to happen. Okay, but anywho, I'm going to tell you about one particular bully. That person that bullied me during middle school and high school and it seemed like as long as she was around, she tried to find everything she could do to make my life miserable. And really just fuck me up, trying to get me fucked up. Okay? It was somebody that I met in the sixth grade. Um, she lived down the street from me. I might as well even say what her name is. Because, you know what? I'm going to say her name. And people, if they go back and say something to her, I don't give a shit. Because it's about, you know, she, she should know what she done did. And from what I'm finding out now, she has not changed a bit. She's still the way she was in school with people. You know, I wasn't the only one. I wasn't basically her only victim. You know, but I can't really call myself a victim because I'm, this time I'm, I'm going to speak out. And if she wants to call or send messages to me saying, why are you talking about me? Why are you talking, saying this shit? I said, well, you know what, because someone had, I said, you know what, I feel like I need to, because of where you are. You know what, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come out and put her in her place. You know what, she, uh, what she needs to see, as I'm not the joy I was when you messed with me. I've come, I've come a long way. I may not be rich and have every fucking thing, but you know what? I'm at, I'm at a point right now. If you want to fuck with fuck with me now, I ain't gonna put, I ain't gonna take your shit. You know what I mean? Okay. Her name was Amber Monday. For those of you that grew up with me in the Mount Washington East End, went to school with me. Everybody knew her. Everybody knew her. And, you know, when I first met her, you know, in the sixth grade, it's like, she came off as a nice person, you know. She came off like you would be her friend, and she wanted to, she would, she was basically, it's like, she acted like she was just your best friend, you know. She would be that way one minute. In sixth grade, she wasn't bad, but when she got to middle school, she showed her true colors, you know. But it's like she want to be your friend one minute and act like she was nice to you. But then the next minute, she just act like she was pissed off and, and she would just be mean and, and so say some of the worst word, hurtful things that you can say that someone could say to somebody. And she was rather... She act like she didn't want me to be myself. She'd be telling me to do this, tell me to do that. You know, and and then because my disability, there's just things she did to taunt me back in school. Her and some of her friends that she had. 
would taunt me in class, taunt me outside at recess during the lunch, you know. She, um, I remember during the, when we went to school at Eastern Hills, I mean, that's what she did, and she would, um, I can remember when, um, it's like every time she run into you, she would come over and pick at me. She would. And the worst thing she fucking did to me, another worst thing she did, she would try to go around. It's like she was trying to do anything she could just to see me suffer and go through pain. You know, if I was trying to make friends in school or anything like that, interact with anybody, she would go tell that person not to be friends with me and go run my mouth, run a mouth, and just dissuade people from having anything to do with me. So, because of her, it was hard for me to make friends. Everybody wanted to believe her before they believed it, before they had to see what was going on with me, you know. But I guess some people are kids, that's what they do, you know. And at the time, I don't even see how. But she had some people did seem to like her. You know, they always go around and talk about how nice Amber was, everything. But in retrospect, she's just a backstabbing bitch. She's fake. She was fucking fake. And there, you know, my, my, I was such a mess back then, I can't understand why I wanted to be friends with her sometimes. But there was some times where maybe I did stuff to get back at her, you know, if I can think about it. But I don't really think I did enough. Because especially when she going around trying to say, well, I just want everybody in this school to gain up on joy and beat the fuck out of her. She wanted to see me get beat up. She wanted to see me have problems at home. Because, you know what, she, she, she would call my parents and lie to them about stuff that I did to get me in trouble. She lied to my parents, you know, thinking that my, my mom, mom did like her first. Because mom thought she was a good person. She thought Amber was a good friend. But, you know... And that's where that was mistaken because Amber thought that she could call my mother and make things up. Hey, Sam, what's up? Amber thought that she could call my mother and tell her I was doing drugs and getting her to do drugs and getting her to steal, getting her to do shit. She would call and tell my mama that stuff in hopes that they, I would get in trouble with my parents and get on my case. Well, you know what? Well, I hate to say it, but you know what? Mama was, it was eighth grade where Mama really was trying to, was getting, starting to figure Amber out pretty good. You know, she start, well, she was figuring her, figuring her out. So, that lie did not go through. Just for her information. And, um, in fact, Mom and Dad was doing the right thing trying to sway me from hanging around her, but sometimes I was stupid and wanted to go hang out with her and her friends just to be part of the in crowd, you know? I mean, me and my parents used to just, mommy and dad used to fuss at me because of the shit, but I mean, I look back at it now and just, and, and actually glad that my parents were strict in that sense because Amber was bad news, you know? I don't know if I would have kept going on with her. I actually fell in and got into some of the shit she did. But I got trouble, enough trouble as it was. But, you know, you get to hanging around Amber, you've been more, I'd have been in more trouble. And, you know, while she was just acting like she, everybody acted like she was a good friend underneath. You know, it's like she would always go bad-mouthing people.
especially the ones that was students that was doing good in school. Okay, like Stephanie, this girl Stephanie Wiggins, she was she was a cheerleader and in school activities all the time, doing good in school. And Amber would just go around and just say, oh, oh Stephanie Wiggins is such a bitch. I want to be her up and all that stuff. Well, that's just how, and she was like it. She jealous of people because they was doing good. And she'd figure anything she could to bring somebody down. And that is one way she would do that is she would try to be your friend, act like she's your best friend. And, you know, let's say you getting good grades in school. Well, she'll have you not let she'll she'll have you doing things to where you won't be doing your homework, and then all of a sudden you failing and you flunk it out, and you in summer school with her ass, you know. Amber didn't care. Amber did not give a shit if she did fail school. Shit, she. I mean, it wasn't the fact that. I mean, getting bad grades ain't always a bad thing, but Amber just did not. It means one thing to give an effort, but you still fail. You know, people do have learning problems, but Amber didn't give a shit. She didn't have, and then it's like she would do things to people and not have any guilt, you know? She's one of those people that just gets a rise in pleasure out of watching people go through suffering and pain and people go through bad luck in life. That's just how she was. She was a just a horrible person. She was a mess. There was a couple times, like I said, in eighth grade, I was getting my ass whooped about every day in school by people. All because of her ass, running on damn mouth to people. You know? That's the reason I had more bullies in the school, because of things she would tell them about. She made it hell. She looked like, it's like she was really had it out for me. And I said, I've never done nothing to the bitch. But I did, you know, there were a few times, like I said, I may have acted out just because of stuff she was doing. You know, and I probably didn't handle them right. You know, like, because of the fact every time I'd see her somewhere, she would want to come over and try to pick at me and fuck with me and shit. But, you know, I would turn right around and, uh, I do things to aggravate her. I remember I would follow her around to her lockers and shit just to, just to aggravate the fuck out of her because of shit she did. Hey, Steve, what's up? <coughs> well, and the bullying was pretty bad in high school, in, in freshman, you know, my junior high year. It was the seventh grade. But eighth grade, it was bad. It was the worst. Seventh and eighth, it was bad in the seventh, and it got worse in eighth grade. Because, like I said, I kept getting my ass whooped every day almost in school, all because of her shit. Now, we went to high school, and went to high school. Went to McNick together for a short time, and it's like we didn't really interact. I didn't go following her around and shit like that, but no, well, I'm not even following her and having anything to do with her, she's going around and, and talking about people, talking them about me, and then she actually had a nerve to get on the bathroom walls and write, Joy Farmer's insane, okay, she wanted to call me insane, she needed to take a look at herself in the fucking mirror, the stuff she was doing to people, you know, she had a lot to talk about, really. I guess she just really had a lot to talk about in terms of that. She need to check herself before she wrecked herself. But she's already wrecked herself anyway. And, you know, I, but I'll get to that in a minute. That's the good part. You know what I mean? So, and then I remember freshman year, you in high school. Couldn't go anywhere. Anytime I run into that bitch, her friends, they come up and just taunt me, say hurtful things, do hurtful things to me, and 
I remember, I remember, well, I'll tell you another thing she did too. Um, she came out one time I was at, I was at home and she tried knocking on my door and couldn't get a hold of me, couldn't get me to come answer the door. And so I wasn't there. So you know what she did? She took the screen door, fucked it up to where I couldn't close it. And then she, uh, turned the faucet, turned the hose on, garden hose on, the water. And had the water run. She was going to flood my fucking yard and do all that shit. And I know if there was any, anything else in my house that was fucked up. And somebody spray painted my... And somebody uh, sha sprayed shaving cream on my dad's car. Or put some weird shit like that. Poured ketchup all over the flower pot. Well, you know what? I know who damn well did it now. It's her and her friends. Her the fucking pack. Shit, she'd always get other people to do stuff to me. She'd have a way of manipulate people, I tell you what. She wasn't fucking with me, I sure, you know what? She's probably, you know, when I think about it, I can only imagine how she was getting other people in her little clutch. Well, then like I said, freshman year, or not just freshman year, but all through high school, she bullied me, cussed me out, called me names, tried to get everybody to beat me up, tried to get everybody to fight me, doing shit like that. Of course, but in high school, I started, you know, getting tough and not putting up no shit. So, you know, there's some shit she didn't do, but there's still other things that she did do. Like, okay, she called the cops on me for shit. You know, say me and my family was going through it and I ran away from home. Okay. Well, she turned around and called my parents to tell them where I was at. She really did me fucking wrong. Really did me wrong. Treated me like I was a fucking lost puppy. You know, instead of being a friend to talk to when I, and be there for me when I needed one, all she wanted to do was just make things worse. You know, and she was, uh, but you know, it was about, but I'll tell you when, she, when high school was when she really started fucking getting fucked up. I'm telling you. <laughs> Well, not only was she fucked up in the head enough, but she was doing alcohol, doing drugs and all that shit, and getting in trouble with people, and just her true colors really started to show. And she was so fucking messed up that, well, I tell you about the story about the guy who, uh, Rex Elam guy that went and uh, robbed and beat up these elderly women. Break, basically, he broke in their apartment. He broke in apartments. He hit about three of them, at least, in Mount Washington. He would get a ladder, break in through the windows of the apartments, go in and take elderly women that was like 80 and 90 years old and beat them up where... <coughs> beat them up so bad, and then drag them into the closet, put them in the closet, and put furniture in front where they couldn't get out, and then he would go in there and steal their jewelry, credit cards, money, all that shit, and in fact, there was one of those elderly women, was 86 years old, had died as a result of the attack, when he attacked her. Um... Okay, Amber knew, Amber was on that when I knew about, knew about that, and lied to the police about when the police questioned her, and you know, I say from then on, it's like, at least I got a little smart in high school where I didn't want shit to do, much to do with her, even though I would come by and see her sometimes, it really wasn't somebody, she just didn't, you know, Plus, just thinking about the things that she, because when I, when high school was over, you know, getting out of high school gave me a chance to think about things. 
Plus, I made other friends, you know. I was hanging down where I, you know, hanging down in the East End, kicking it down there more instead of Mount, you know, kicking it down there more in the hood, you know, where I had more friends. But, you know, I tell you what Amber tried to get me to do. She go around lie about some people down on Eastern Avenue and say, Oh, they are going around talking about me, doing this shit, doing that, trying to get me not to hang with somebody, tell people about, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, just use me for something. Use me as a slave. But, you know, come to find out, you know, all Amber wanted to do was start shit. Create shit. Create drama. Bullshit. You know, she basically could have had me fucked up down there in the East End because of her shit. So she wasn't, she had never changed. She never changed. And other things she did, she tried to steal from me and dog me out of cigarettes or anything I was getting. And she said, you know what, if you have this and that, I'm keeping it. You know? She steal from you and, and, and get you to give her shit and not and not have any remorse for it, you know? She act like she would she would just do things like that and think it was funny. She's messed up. She was messed up. I tell you, but when she did that help that when she lied to the police, you know, when she was involved with that uh robbery with Rex Eagle did, oh she really got really was fucked up after that. And what's really fucked up, they only gave her when they punished her. They only gave her six months of Hillcrest, which was a boarding school. And honestly, I think the punishment they gave her wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. They should have made her go stay in D D Y S Department of Youth Services up there. They should have made her go up there and serve time with W C. Make her stay there. I mean, till she should stay there till she was twenty one. She was she was always still fucked up. And, you know, she gets in deep shit a lot. So, it's like, I have to say, but the thing she did to me was really coming back at me. Really coming down. Really coming back. It, it, was, it was coming back to bite her in the ass. Karma was got biting her in the ass. And as I continued to keep touch with other people over the years, you know, well, she had kids. She had two sons. And, you know, she had him through, uh, had him by this guy, uh, Mark Shenefeld. And what Mark Shenefeld didn't really stay around her whole life, you know. Thought that was the love of her life, but I guess, you know, Mark got tired of her shit. But what I don't understand is how come Mark didn't get custody of the stuff, the kids, because she's got them kids fucked up now. She's got one of the... One of her oldest son is, is, is kind of being, is kind of just like her in a way. But, you know, I guess, you know, like mother, like son. I don't know. And I remember, you know, I knew all the things she did to me. And it's like after after high school, I, did, I didn't want much to do with her. And I started to become more distant from her, especially when I left Ohio, left Cincinnati for good when I was 20 years old. Went to move to Moorhead and moved all over. So, you know, I, you know, I, I really didn't, you know, well, I got to do things, but, you know, well, I got to do things I did. So, I, I you know, karma would start with pretty much getting the biter in the ass, you know, because while I was out and going places, and even I went through hardships myself being homeless. You know, from what I'm under, what I found out, Amber's just been stuck at home, stuck living in her mama's house, not doing nothing, just being a deadbeat. From the time she graduated from high school and until now, uh, I mean, the jobs that she had, she you know she couldn't keep jobs at all. She wouldn't last that long. Plus, she didn't want to work. 
She didn't want fucking work anyway. She was lazy. You see how she was in school? Well, she showed got like that on the jobs. And people I'm trying to remember what else happened to her. You know. Uh, it got worse time went on. You know, she got worse, so she got worse. Um from what I understand, she's lived so many places. She has went out and lived out on her own for a few times, so many times, but never lasted long, you know. She was basically back and forth to her mama's house, in and out of her mama's house, you know, her whole life. Uh, and... Um, so she's really had, uh, and from what I understand, just the way she is, she's no different than what she was in school. She's still going around wanting to gain up on people, talk bad about people, and <coughs> steal from people, and, and like I said, do the things. She, you know, she. I tell you what she did when I was in, I remember middle school. We was playing baseball out in the street. And she had a damn a ball or something through a window, and the window broke, and she thought it was funny. She didn't go tell the guy that happened, but imagine that guy that came out there and seen his car like that, and he's like, you know, but she thought it was funny. she do shit like that, think it was funny. Do things you know <coughs> damn well that you ain't allowed to do, and you can't fucking do. And she think it's funny. And, you know, I have to say maybe one way she did wind up like this is her mom, her fan, her, her mom, bro, everybody just let her get away with shit, you know. Her mom, and then she was full too. It's like, I mean, one time I was riding with her and her mom. We stopped over at the Fifth Third Bank. Amber, would she let Amber go get the money out of the ATM machine and would give Amber $25 a week for a fucking allowance. I'd be like, damn. She was on the eighth grade getting that kind of allowance. I was lucky to even get three dollars or draw a fucking dollar. Lucky to get anything every week. See, my mom and dad didn't have that kind of money, but I guess Amber's mom did have money at the time. Yep. Yep, she just, and then, but still, it's like her mom and brother spoiled her, but then she turned around and say, I hate my brother. I hate my mom. I hate my family. I hate this person. You know, just, you know, I guess I thought she was bullying me, but she was probably doing shit to other people, even her family. You know, I was like, man, how did her mom, hey, Stefan, what's up? I was like, man, how did her mom and brother just ever deal with her? How? I mean, I swear if I did so much shit she did, my dad would kick my ass. My dad would kick my ass if I did some of the shit she fucking did and just didn't care and laughed about. It. Thank you, God, he would. He did do what he did his job as a dad. I know my pet, my kids was like that. Uh huh. My kids would have got their ass whooped too by me. I might, you know, have been a little lenient about stuff, but at the same time. You won't, you ain't gonna go around if you go around act the way she did, honey. All your privileges are gonna be gone. I'm gonna ground your butt and I'm gonna kick your ass. No, no sense, no sense doing the things she did. And I'm now finding out. You see, she she's been in trouble with the law quite a bit. You know, basically for disorderly conduct. Stealing, getting caught. Well, she got caught with some drugs, and I don't know. She been, she's just got a long list of stuff, you know. The cops just, like I said, let her get away with it, you know. But what I understand, her dad, I think, I don't know if her dad was a police officer or if he worked for the police department, but I'm sitting there thinking, if that's the truth, no wonder she's getting away with shit. And. I'm coming to find out. I heard. I heard. They said. They said she was just a mess. People are saying the people I talked to down. 
said she is so fucked up in the head. And he said she fell and broke both of her knees. And I said, man, I gotta find out. What... She said she's living a life of misery. And, you know, I know we don't, I, well, no, I don't wish bad on anybody, even my worst enemy to them. Just considering the things that she's done in the past and, and what she did to me and the way she still is now and the probable possibility, you know, this, this forecast and let's say if I was to run into her out the street again, see if she would try to do the same shit she did when I was a child. Well, if she try to come bully me and do and, and, and mess with me and do this shit like she did when I was a child. Well, I'm not scared of her. I'm not. She don't know how I am now. You don't know where I've been. You don't know where I've been, bitch, since you last seen me. You don't even know where I've been once I got out of high school. I just seen, you know... Got my mind right, basically. My mind was right. Got my mind right after this. And realize some of the shit you fucking did. And, you know, I don't wish bad on anybody, but hearing these stories about you, Amber, about you having your life fucked up and you getting in deep shit, honestly, it's making my day. It is making my day. And right now, I'm sitting here just waiting for something bad for you, uh, fucked up for you to happen again, because I want to see what happens next, you know? I'm watching you like a movie right now. I'm watching you like a movie, and I'm just laughing my ass off. You know, I heard she lost her mother's I Actually, after, so after living so many places... She finally moved, she finally had to go back and live with her mother. And I think something about the house, she and her mama paid the mortgage off on that house, but Amber was paying on the house too. And they had to get the mortgage down to $300 a month, which she can afford it. And I guess she didn't even pay that since she lost the house over crack cocaine. And so I heard that. But boy, hey Lee, what's up? Lee Fisher. But just hearing about this stuff is making my day. Making my day. I know I got Amber's ass probably blocked because, you know, you're going to probably get people to get on here and still be dumb enough to be friends with her ass and probably going to go back and say, you know, guess what? Joy did a live video about uh, talking bad about you on Facebook. Well, you know, she did me like that. She did me. You think I have every right to? I think I have every right to speak up on this fucking matter. I have a right to speak my piece because, hey, you know, you don't know what bullying does to people. You scar people. You know, she's probably laughing about it, thinking, you know, she let her laugh, let her laugh, because you know what. Karma, that's why her life's all fucked up right now. That's why your life's all fucked up. Karma's coming biting her in the fucking ass. Mm-hmm. You know what? She used to talk about my neighborhood. She used to talk bad about East End. She always talked bad about my hood. And I don't give a shit. When you don't come to find out, I heard after she... I heard that uh, last I heard, I heard she was actually living there. I'm sitting there laughing my ass off. She's like, I've seen posts where it's like, oh, I'm trying to get me another place. I hate this place. Yuck. And then um, I heard now a friend, a person that was friends with her. It's like all the, all the, all, a lot of the, the people have gotten to see Amber's true colors, you know. She don't have all the friends she did growing up. People ain't wanting to be around her, especially because she's fucked up and messed up in the head. They don't want to be around her. They don't want to. And now she's uh, going be going out with Eric's brother, Josh. Josh Neiman. Josh Neiman's put up with her. Well, Josh ain't no different. Josh is just like her. 
you know, I think she found her match. Because like I said, Mark didn't put up with her ass. Mark finally left her ass. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> I'm just laughing my ass off because <laughs> I'm ready for more. I'm ready to see more. I want to hear more shit. If anybody's got more shit to tell me about her, please tell me. Please tell me more about Amber Mundy. Because I, 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 like, I really like hearing all this. And, um, well, but, now my friend, I probably can't say I like this one, because a friend of mine, her son, is living in an apartment building that her brother owns. Well, Amber's actually living in that building, too. And Amber caused a lot of damages. I said, what kind of damage Amber caused? I said, I really want to, I want to hear about this, because, and that's probably the reason why she couldn't keep places everywhere else she's gone, you know? She's had so many places out there and always had to go back and stay with the mother. You know, in the house that she grew up in at 1359 Meadow Bright Lane. But Amber's got a lot of damages. Now Amber's brother wants to fix shit up. And now she's trying to say that my he's trying to say that my friend's son is the one that uh messed that that damaged the apartment all up, and he's trying to take him and sue him for that. It's like, well, the guy didn't do that. He's trying to cover up for his sister. I was like, see, that's, what's, that, that's where the problem is right there. That's where the problem is. Mom and dad, mom's going to just basically not teach her right from wrong, just let her get away with shit. And right now it's like, I, I'm ready to hear more shit. I'm really ready to hear more. You know, maybe I shouldn't have her on block, Amber on block, because... If Amber was to sit here about this and, and message me and all this, oh, I'm going to tell her what the fuck I think of her, and I'm going to tell her why I fucking did it, you know? And I'm not ashamed of what I did, you know? So, you know, even though it's been years ago that she did this, she's not any better off, and, you know, it's like, hey, I'm using all this just to get back at my childhood bully for bullying all the stuff he did, all the stuff that she did to me, all the mean stuff that she was, she did to me back when I was young. Well, me just laughing at her uh, shortcomings and all the bad things happened to her life, you know, it, it's really making my day. So that's my way of getting back at her ass. Oh gosh, I'm really ready to get really good revenge on this bitch now. You know, but like I said, the friend she's had, the closest friend she's had in middle school, don't want nothing to do with her no more. Yep. Come on, uh, don't want to get in trouble because of her shit no more, so, you know, she ain't trying to get involved in her shit. And then another friend just, you know, can't trust having her around because she steals from people. This is the way she is with other people, the way she treats people, you know? So I, I feel like, you know, I'm really enjoying seeing her get what she deserves, you know? I hope to hear more stories. So if any of you are watching this and remember who Amber Mundy was, I'd like some updates, please. So that's the end of this video. Peace.